Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Strong's Biology. And in this lecture, we want to talk about sigma factors. What are sigma factors? What are their role in the process of prokaryotic transcription? We'll also talk about different variants of sigma factors and the roles that they play in various different kinds of scenarios in prokaryotic transcription. So let's begin. Starting with the sigma factor transcription process. Now what we uh, want to understand from this particular uh, class is the importance of sigma factor. Right? We talk about the role of sigma factor is there to recognize promoter. I believe all of you know this. You may know this, you may not know this, but remember one thing. The sigma factor is a subunit that is included in the hollow enzyme of RNA polymerase, which is going to initiate the process of promoter recognition during the starting phase of prokaryotic transcription. So in prokaryotic transcription, that is let's say transcription in E. coli, there will be involvement of this small protein subunit called sigma subunit of the RNA polymerase, also known as the sigma factor. Without the sigma factor, the RNA polymerase can exist. So let me also give you this idea here. The RNA polymerase RNA polymerase can exist without, without sigma factor, okay. So I will write sigma factor. Without sigma factor, RNA polymerase can exist. But without sigma factor, it will be termed as a core enzyme, core enzyme, right. It is called as core enzyme. But now, uh, when the sigma factor comes in, it is turned into a hollow enzyme, okay. This is the concept of how difference is core enzyme from the hollow enzyme. Hollow enzyme is the, is the complete functional unit of an enzyme where all the factors and all the subunits are in place, right. But sigma is separated. Sigma is a part of this hollow. But when you separate the sigma, then it is going to give us a core enzyme. So the thing is that the core enzyme is a functional enzyme, fully functional enzyme, but it will lack some features. For example, like RNA polymerase in prokaryotes, the core enzyme of RNA polymerase is capable of binding to the DNA, but it is not capable of proper interaction to the DNA prop by mean pro by meaning proper I, I want to say that it cannot particularly figure out the promoter region in the DNA and without figuring out the promoter region in the DNA this RNA polymerase cannot initiate transcription for initiating transcription the DNA polymerase need the promoter region of the DNA polymerase need to be recognized by the RNA polymerase and for that purpose they require the sigma factor for that purpose they require the sigma factor to do so okay so we have this without sigma factor the core enzyme now with sigma factor the hollow enzyme the hollow enzyme i mean, I mean the core enzyme itself has two alpha units one beta unit one beta prime unit and another omega unit so these are this four, uh, so two alpha, beta, gamma, omega. So there is this five units that are out there. But in hollow enzyme, we have all this plus we have the sigma. And the sigma factor that we use here is known as factor number 70 or also known as sigma 70. Remember, sigma 70. It is written like this, sigma 70. And sigma 70 is known as a very basic transcription factor for transcribing all the uh, housekeeping genes. Housekeeping genes are those genes, the product of which is required throughout of the lifespan of the prokaryotes. So we need to turn those on or off depending upon our requirement, but we need them throughout. There are specific protein products required maybe in response to some environmental stress, let's say high temperature or very low temperature, right, or starvation. For that we have different factors, but for general, the like let's say glucose metabolizing enzymes, those are required always in the cell. They need to be ready in the cell. For the synthesis of those glucose metabolizing enzymes, 
we have this general sigma factor, generalized transcription factor, the general transcription factor that is sigma 70 that is involved in here. Okay. So RNA polymer is without and with uh, sigma factor I already told you. The with the sigma factor, without the sigma factor I already mentioned you the idea. Now beyond that what I need to talk about is basically the role of the sigma factor. I told you the role is to detect the promoter region. Promoter region of the DNA. Right? It helps in detection of the promoter region. How can a protein subunit detect a promoter region? Obviously by recognizing sequence. In the DNA, prokaryotic DNA, there is a sequence. Okay? If this is the start site, then there is upstream of this. Upstream means to the left hand side this will be upstream and right hand side we have downstream. Upstream of this start site what we have? Upstream of the start site we have the nomenclature as something like this minus 35, minus 10. Downstream of it we have this plus 10, plus 35, plus 60 like that. So start is a zeroth step or point from where the process will begin. From 1, 2, 3, 4 that means we are making mRNA. From 1, from 1 we are making the mRNA in transcription. Upstream of it we have minus 35 which is far away from the start site, minus 10, little less. So we have reverse nomenclature, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that. Now the sequence that we have here, minus 35 and minus 10, this sequence is very conserved, conserved sequence. Conserved throughout evolutionary history and a particular sequence is repeated here. Particular nucleotide pattern is repeated. That pattern of sequence known here is a Pribnow box. Pribnow box. This Pribnow box that we find here, in case of eukaryotes, we also have a sequence uh, conserved known as Tata box. The sequence is T-A-T-A-T, -A -A something like that. Here in prokaryotes, we don't have Tata box, but we have similar product. We, have, we call it Pribno box. This Pribno box is present minus 10 and minus 35. That is the place. So the thing is the RNA polymerase is loaded here somewhere upstream of the start site. And once it is loaded, it is loaded in this sequence of minus 35 to minus 10. That is a part of the promoter. Also known as promoter. Remember, promoter, part of the promoter. So when I say DNA promoter region, it is actually the place generally upstream of the start site of transcription or overlapping the start site of the transcription. That is the promoter region. Generally, most of the cases, it is the upstream of the transcriptional start site. So the polymerase will bind to this region. And upon binding, so it binds with the sigma factor because sigma, sigma factor helps in the recognizing of the promoter. The polymerase may bind somewhere further upstream, minus 100, minus 200, maybe somewhere there. And then they start to scan for the specific sequence. Remember I told you by, they recognize the promoter by sequence. So they start scanning the sequence. So scan, 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 scan. The moment they find the sequence between minus 35 and minus 10, they stop because of the presence of sigma factor. It helps in this recognition this interaction. Then once they find out the promoter, then that means they once they find out the sequence, what is the algorithm in this RNA polymerase? The algorithm is that once they find the sequence, that means obviously the start site is very near. So they stretch the structure of the polymerase to reach the start site. The polymerase structure is altered. DNA polymerase, uh, RNA polymerase is huge, lengthy protein. RNA polymerase is huge, it is complicated and does not require multiple enzymes to do their job. RNA polymerase can do the job of unwinding the DNA, right? Adding nucleotides, joining them, everything on its own. It does not require function of helicase, which we need in case of DNA polymerization. It does not require any other accessory protein, stopoisomerase and all, but they will play a role. Obviously, from DNA, they are playing the role. But here, they are sufficient in transcribing the template DNA on their own. So, when they find out the promoter region, they know that little upstream there is a start site. So, they extend themselves. The protein structure is extended. 
and the moment the protein structure gets extended okay what happens the moment protein structure extended it fills its start point is ready so once the start point is ready the sigma factor gets released then the polymer has become a core enzyme from hollow enzyme it becomes a core enzyme because the sigma factor gets kicked out the moment they find out the start site the job of the sigma factor is done and sigma factor is so important in the cell cell need to recycle them right so the existing sigma factors the job is done you come back and you start the job in the, some other place so that is why instead of making more and more sigma factor which is uh, a labor intensive energy intensive they stick to this pathway that once the sigma factor helps in selecting the proper promoter sigma factor gets released and the transcription will actually begin that is the process of initiation of prokaryotic transcription and that is how it is done the initiation of prokaryotic transcription okay initiation of prokaryotic transcription is performed in this particular manner by the rna polymerase and the sigma factor associated to them sigma factor do the job of detecting the promoter binding to the promoter and obviously detecting it and do the job that is by common sigma factor that is sigma 70 that is a very usual kind of sigma factor sigma 70 you can see in this image also the hollow enzyme with sigma factor binds to minus 35 to minus 10 once they find out the start site then the sigma factor gets released the release uh, event is not mentioned in here but obviously it should be released it will turn hollow enzyme will turn into a core enzyme and the synthesis of mrna will begin from that plus one got it now the rna polymer is a structure if you look we have alpha and alpha prime beta beta prime gamma and omega these are the subunits that they have now gamma presents is a question but still they have the subunits but apart from this core enzyme the sigma 70 is involved to make the hollow enzyme remember this name always hollow means uh, blank but actually hollow in this case is reversibly used hollow is with the sigma factor core is with less subunits hollow is with more subunits in this case addition of a sigma factor converting core enzyme to a hollow enzyme of rna polymerase okay so that is the role of the sigma factor the common role of the sigma factor is clear now apart from this common sigma factor that is sigma 70 which is involved in the transcription of housekeeping genes housekeeping genes right but there are different variations of the sigma factor found in different prokaryotic species now the different variants that we found we have sigma 60 we have sigma 32 we have sigma uh, i think 28 right 58 so there are different variants so the variants that we see variants of sigma factors they are related to some specific role a specific role in response to in response to the signal in response to signal that they receive from the environment depending upon the signal they receive from the environment based on that this other sigma factors that we know they have their role to play now let's look at the list of other sigma factors and what role that they play here we have sigma 70, 50, I think 60 is not mentioned, I mentioned here. Sigma 70, the important ones I will mention, sigma 70, the one that we have discussed, then sigma 54, okay. Uh, then third, sigma 32 and 24 together, I will say. Then sigma 28 and this fifth one is sigma 60. These five are the very important ones that I will say. Sigma 70, the gene encodes for this protein sigma 70 is RPOD involved in the housekeeping gene functions but there is a sigma 54 involved in the nitrogen regulated genes in nitrogen assimilation they help in the process of nitrogen assimilation nitrogen regulated genes are regulated by this sigma 54 sigma 32 and sigma 24 both are involved in the heat shock genes means they help in the transcription of heat shock genes so function means transcription right transcription transcription of functions 
for the transcription of heat shock genes. Function of heat, heat shock genes like uh, sigma 32, sigma 24, both are involved in the heat shock gene transcription. Sigma 28, what is the role of sigma 28? Involved in the flagella synthesis or chemotaxis mechanism. Flagella synthesis, when a prokaryotic cell requires a flagella production and also movement towards a particular sudden chemical components as a chemotaxis machinery, that is also done by this sigma 28 and sigma 60 is involved in the process of endospore formation. Endospore formation. It is involved in the process of endospore formation. The sigma 60 is involved in the process of endospore formation. So again endospore formation means when the Prokaryotic cell is under stress, under uh, what kind of stress? Starvation. Just sigma 38 is also involved in the process of starvation. It is also known as sigma S. Remember S for starvation, sigma 38. General stress response, whenever there is a stress event in prokaryotes, they generate variety of different sigma factors. And this variety of different sigma factors are going to involve in the process of various kinds of functions, including uh, the heat shock protein production, cold shock protein production, flagella synthesis and chemotaxis, starvation in general stress response or endospore formation. For all these very, very vital processes in the cell, the sigma factor is actually involved in the process of different kinds of transcription event, not just the transcription of housekeeping genes, but the transcription of genes which are related to the nitrogen metabolism, related to the flagella uh, growth and chemotaxis, related to the starvation management, related to the uh, formation of endospore, right? So these are some, these are all specialized sigma factors, special sigma factors, which we generally not talk. When you talk about sigma factor, we talk about sigma 70, but these factors are also involved in several different functions as we have just discussed. So I believe you have a clear idea about the sigma factor and its role in the processes of prokaryotic transcription, prokaryotic transcription initiation. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.